Well, I'm glad to say it. Finally, any Cubic have stepped up their game. And yeah, with a lackluster outing in the 12K department, the new M5S Pro is more than just a boost in resolution or a printer with a heater. It's finally a contender in the modern space and one that not only plays a trump card against their direct competitor, but also signals to those earlier M5 and M5S adopters that your printer's about to get better too. But is it perfect? Hi, I'm Ross and this is Fohammer Videos. Right, let's get this out of the way first. This 14K printer is not 14K. I'm not going to go into the tirade about why. I'm finally going to make a separate video on the subject that I promised to do months ago, just so I can separate the same repeated whine from all of my videos. And that whine is that the K metric is a terrible way to compare printers. And this is not a 14K resolution printer. Whenever you hear 14K, think bullshit. In fact, this is only about two thirds of the pixel count you should have from a 14K resolution. So it's utter bullshit. The pixel count on this display is about 6 million pixels less than what a true 12K resolution would have. And bear in mind the 12K printers weren't 12K either. So instead of this egregiously misleading K metric, I'm gonna go forward by comparing printers by their anisotropic voxel constraint or AVC which in this case is 24.8 microns. And if you want to know more about what that means, you'd best be subscribed to watch my future video that explains it in detail. But the TLDR version is that it's the largest dimension of a single printable voxel from any of these printers. Comparing this to the M5 and M5S, their AVC was 24 microns. So this is slightly worse, but it's by 0.8 microns, or you should read that as nothing. You can't see the difference between 16.8 and 24.8 microns on the different axes of this printer, so there's no chance you'll be able to see a 0.8 micron difference between the Pro and the other M5s. Now moving on, literally everything in this printer bar the screen is nigh on identical to the original M5S. And I had some comments on my last review that I'm being petty because I complain these printers have plastic feet, and I love that in over an hour and a half's worth of video content covering the M5, the M5S, comparing both printers and then comparing them against the Saturn III printers, all these few commenters heard was that I whinged about plastic feet, as though that was my conclusion about the whole printer. For those of you who actually listened rather than argued only for the sake of justifying your flash purchase, you'll already know I said these printers aren't bad, they're just made in such a way that they're designed more for the user who wants super fast average quality prints rather than slower super quality prints or even those people who want the option of it. And for many people, especially those using more budget friendly resins, What's wrong with average quality? Why spend more on a sharper printer if you're going to limit yourself with cheap resin anyway? If this is you and you're happy with that level of quality, get one of those. I know tons of happy people who have. But with all that being said, sorry, but having plastic feet on a printer like this is a cost saving shortfall that any cubic should be a little embarrassed by. This just slides across work surfaces like a curling stone on ice. Just unscrewing the print bed retaining bolt causes the whole printer to just spin. So look, that whole point was you'll probably need a rubber mat for this to sit on if you get one of these printers, but this is a bit cheap from any cubic. Come on guys, put some rubber feet on it, come on. Another cheapness here comes from the non-capacitive screen. It's constantly reading presses at different parts of the display than where I'm pressing. Most noticeably, when I try to scroll through the pages of prints, the up and down options are frequently registered as me pressing the printable object in the top right corner. So let's move on to some good things. As you may know, the M5S released with an auto leveling system, though it seems more than the odd couple of users had issues with this. And to combat the problem, Anycubic released a version of the print bed which had adjustable bolts on it. And I'm pleased to see that you get that here. Now, you shouldn't need to adjust this, but you might. And if you do, it's no different to the loosen the bolts, lower the bed, tighten the bolts process that is common on pretty much every other resin printer out there. But in my case, it was level fine from the off. Yay! And I would suggest at this point that if you want to get a better view of this printer's features like the build style and ports, etc., I'd watch my M5S review because I'm not covering everything again as I want to go into more detail about the new stuff rather than bore most of my audience with the things that I've already said. So much of this printer is the exact same. The chassis is the same, the port placement's the same, the resin level detection is the same, even the UI is the same upgraded version from the M5S over the M5. 
And I've got to say, I am a growing fan of the force sensor that they've added to this machine, and it does work. When I removed the vat and bed so I could film the screen, the printer correctly advised me that there wasn't enough resin in to complete the small print. And I was also told that this sensor is meant to dynamically determine movement speed and pull forces for you, but there wasn't an obvious option in the UI to enable this, and the printer was moving at the speeds I told it for lift and retract in the slicer. But if this gets figured out and starts working, that's an absolute game changer, because those settings are some of the most complicated ones that most people get wrong. Or even if they're not wrong, they're potentially often too slow. So if this works, and I can't get it to work, so hopefully that we figure it out soon, but if this works, then your printer and resin combo can print at the fastest possible speeds without you having to do anything. If I figure this out, I'll drop a note down in the comments to say, yeah, you can do it. But anyway, my M5S review already said that I like these failure detection features, and when you have the Anycubic phone app, you're also notified of errors remotely too. I think it's much better to be told something like not enough resin before you start, or that something has become dislodged from the bed mid-print, rather than wait several hours to find out that your print failed halfway through. Another useful and so far any cubic only feature is the RERF test. This basically means that you can put eight models on the build plate using the any cubic workshop slicer, name it RERF or whatever the RERF file is called on the root of the USB drive you get with this, and it'll print those eight models in 0.25 second increments of each other. I really do need to do a video about this at some point because it is a fantastic feature. Anyway, thanks to this, I was able to get my exposure time dialed in to 1.5 seconds with a single print. What I did find interesting though is even though I lowered the layer height from my usual 30 microns I tested the original M5S on to 20 microns on the Pro, the exposure time for the same resin was still 1.5 seconds. And this suggests to me that the light transmittance for the panel is slightly weaker with this printer. Though to be honest, that makes sense due to all the extra pixels on the display, which probably also means there's more wiring when compared to the 12K units. Now the issue I mentioned in those M5 reviews, which very few other people seem to pick up on despite many owners echoing, is that despite the resolution, the print edges were really soft and bloated, no matter what type of release film you used. And I think that's mostly due to the outdated and uncontrolled Matrix UV light sources where other brands have adopted cob lighting and Fresnel lenses. But now with the release of the Pro, Anycubic have advised that this software has been updated and with thorough testing, they've actually improved light uniformity from this array to 85%. And in the print results I have, this seems to be the case. Despite having exactly the same Y resolution as the original M5S, prints from this machine are clearly sharper than those earlier models. And I can tell just by looking at the exposure test file. And that's also despite this printer using ACF film, which I originally thought was PFA because it looked clear before I removed the protective layer. But I can still get 13 posts and 13 holes on an exposure test, which is just shy of what the 12K competition can do without ACF. So this alone puts any cubic back in the running for a solid mid-sized high resolution printer. But what's gonna nudge them over the edge for many people is the inclusion of a chamber heater with this device. But I'm going to come back to that after another couple of quick whinges. One is Wi-Fi. I had a nightmare getting this to work with the M5s, and it's no different with the M5S Pro. You have to use your phone and connect it to the printer's own Wi-Fi network. Then in the app, you tell the printer what your Wi-Fi credentials are in your home. But to even get it to connect to your phone in the first place, you need to press the refresh button on the printer before you do anything. Sometimes that refresh button does nothing, and other times your phone just won't find the printer's Wi-Fi network anyway. It took me over an hour to get this work because I wanted to get it right so I could explain it easily to you guys, but it turns out sometimes it just works. And when it does work, what features do you get? You get to monitor the printer from the phone app and send prints to it from the phone app. Does anyone really use a resin printer like this? Honestly. Why can't I just connect the printer to my network using the on-screen display, choose the network I want to connect to and type in the password from there? And once I have got it connected to my network, why can't I connect to the printer using the slicer on my PC and send files to it that way? This addition of a feature but lack of a function is just dumb. And the other one is the fan underneath. It's so damn loud. 
Does it need to be this loud? I know you need to call the components, but wow. Being underneath too, it creates a low profile airflow channel, which exacerbates the echo of this noise. I'm guessing they need to call this printer more than they did with the earlier M5s, but it would have cost them too much to relocate the fan on the housing. So I don't know, maybe if they just raised it up a little more, perhaps with some rubber feet. Now then, the heater. It works. It actually works. Unlike other brands who have integrated such a device only to disable it as soon as you start printing because they hope the internal components keep it warm enough, this heater sticks to your printer and plugs in via a separate power cable. And for all intents and purposes, it's a separate device. In fact, it just sticks in the corner of your printer with a large sticker. It's a simple device. It has four buttons, power, filter, temp up or down. And you can set this to heat the environmental air to anything from 10 to 40 degrees Celsius. Now, yes, as I've said before, chamber heaters will heat the air and the printed model, and it'll heat the resin in the vat last. So yes, this is not the most efficient method, but it's still a better method than no heater at all. So just be aware to get the best out of it, you need to put the lid on and bring it to temp and leave it there for a good few minutes before you start your print. When you take the lid off the printer, however, that temperature is going to drop rapidly. However, as I said, this is a separate device. It's got its own plug and the cable for that plug squeezes into a little notch on the lid. Existing M5 owners may be aware of this notch as they have one already. And yes, that means that you can get one of these heaters for your current printer. In fact, even if you own a non-AnyCubic printer, it wouldn't take much to carve out an appropriate notch for your device. I highly expect AnyCubic will sell significantly more of these than the M5S Pro itself. And that's not all when it comes to upgrades. AnyCubic have also confirmed that existing M5 owners will be able to upgrade to the 14K screen if they wish. Now, I see this more of a screen swap than an upgrade, but what I'm more interested in is whether they'll make this new software available for all the M5 printers, which improves the light uniformity no matter what M5 screen you have. So, where does this now stack up against the current line of printers, and should you get one? Well, AnyCubic have done all they can with this hardware to make prints from it more comparable to the competition. A surprising move considering that before this they were clearly out of the running for most people. And I hope they can improve the light uniformity of their existing M5s with a software update. It would make sense if they could as they claim this is a software fix. If they can't then it suggests there's more going on here in the M5S Pro and they aren't telling us what. But even with the improvements, the cob lighting and Fresnel lenses of competing brands printers do still just edge out in terms of sharpness. And I've got to say, it is appropriate that this printer is called the M5S Pro because it's still a far cry from the premium product we saw with the M3 series, a printer which AnyCubic killed long before its time and people are still scrambling to pick them up secondhand over many other printers from the last generation. So yeah, this is still a bit of a cheapo printer from AnyCubic in terms of components. Plastic slidey feet is stupid, Wi-Fi functions that only work with your app is, well, it's just anti-consumer. And we are still feeling the echoes of the issues that people had with the auto leveling from the previous M5s. So AnyCubic do have some work to do to build back that consumer trust. But if you can get past their cheapness and cheekiness, they have a high resolution printer that gives us great quality prints. And whilst this does not deliver on all of the convenience features of my current top pick 3D printer, the thing people care most about from that model is the heater anyway. And whilst this may not be the most efficient way to heat a resin printer, it's a way that works. And the printer does have some great warning features too, in order to prevent failures. Would I buy this printer? Well, Yes, for a cheap way to have a heated high resolution printer, most certainly. And unless they can deliver a visibly improved light uniformity on the earlier M5s, this is the only one in that range that I would buy. I want to say thanks for watching and a huge thanks goes out to our members who are constantly helping us to make content like this, helping us afford to keep building this channel. So thank you so much, guys. Please consider joining them, get your name up in lights, early access to comments, priority comment replies, and I don't know, I'll think of something new in the future, like a way to get you exclusive models. I want to thank you for watching and also if you could just drop us a like or a comment down below to feed the algorithm maybe this video can help other people you never know you liking commenting tells youtube to tell other people that this video exists thank you very much for that
I just want to end with, until next time, it's Hudson, sir. He's Hicks. Thanks for watching. Fahama out.